because right now you're traveling all over the world, you're building wellness centers, you um, do access bars with groups uh, of many people sometimes at a time. I, I want to hear why you do this, because from my, what I understand, your background is science and business, and you wanted to be a pediatrician. And so why, why this? Yeah, so it's really interesting because from the beginning, I would say a very young age, I always wanted to help people. Like I had the greatest joy when someone was sad and then they were happy or someone was ill and then they were healthy. And so even though I decided not to pursue the medical um, route, which there was an earthquake in California that kind of assisted in that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I realized that I never gave it up, you know, like even at work, even, you know, building companies in the corporate world or technology or anything like that, like people would always come in my office and they would be frustrated or they're like ready to quit or they'd be ready to do something. And they would just sit down and we'd have a conversation and then they would leave happy. They'd feel energized. They felt like empowered and excited about their job again. Hmm. And so I don't think I ever gave it up per se, um, but I realized it looked different. So I would on the weekends or whatever, I always kept learning different things. Some can call it self-development. Some can call it business workshops. Some call it modalities, you know, I just over the last 30 years have been trying different things, but they were always for me and then the toolbox. So if you had a problem going on or if you needed to be more creative, I would pull that tool out of my toolbox, you know, and there it was. Hmm, okay. But 10 years ago, um, I actually went to an event it was a workshop. It was a weekend workshop. And I, um, it was called Quantum Touch. And it's something that was created um, really to assist everyone, but a lot of the medical industry ends up utilizing it as well. So we had doctors and nurses and others that realized hmm. that they have a gift with their touch. And so this weekend, um, workshop I attended and um, the woman that sat next to me was really interesting. She hadn't walked her dogs for six years wow. and I ended up working on her knees for about 20 minutes. And then she's like, you don't understand. I don't know what you did, but my knees don't hurt. I can bend them. I haven't been able to bend them this so way. So you were years. trained in, in quantum touch at that time and yeah. you were working with her using that modality. I Method. I don't even know if we were trained. We were partnered up from the beginning. Like okay. the teacher didn't even talk that much. You know, she talked for five minutes and then she said, put your hands on people, you know, and then she started talking about quantum touch and the energies of quantum touch. And so, yeah, <laughs> it was this magical, you know, quickie. Um, and so during lunch, she left and went to go walk her dogs, which she hadn't done in six years, you know, and she came back and she was so excited. So after that class, we kept in touch and um, I worked with her one on one on different things that were going on in her life. And then she called me on my birthday or the day before my birthday or something like that. She was like, can I come gift you something for your birthday? And I was like, yes, I guess. <laughs> right. you know? But I knew it wasn't like a physical gift of like a gift. It just was like, she said, I learned this tool. And I was like, wow, like just the energy of it felt really good. And on my birthday, she came, she laid down her massage table and I lied, lay down. And then she put her hand on the back of my head and my third eye and I melted. I was like, what is this? Like, what is this thing? And I have to tell the whole world about it. And I was wow. so excited. Now everyone experiences this thing called the access bars different that day for me. Like I'm a very high energetic kind of person and very active and very talkative it sped me up even more, you know, I had even right. more energy where some people, they 
just relax and go to sleep. Some people, they cry because there's certain things that come up for them. Like it's just, you can have such different experiences. And after that, um, I just knew the world needs to know that this exists. Yes. Like um, at that moment, my life was going what people would say amazing. You know, I was married. My husband's career was doing very well. My business was doing really well. My kids were very active in school. Um, exams were going, like everything in our lives were going very well. We had just bought a house. We sold our house in less than one day. Okay. And so there was this stress of selling the house and buying the new house. My business was booming. Like it just seemed like every part of my life was stressed. And in even the first five seconds and five minutes of whatever this thing was, I wasn't stressed anymore. I, I was just enthused. And I was like, if I can let go of my stress this quickly, like who else wants to know about right. this, you know? Yeah. Well, it was so interesting. So ago. I actually, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say like, that was 10 years ago and it's just been a journey since then. And I'll tell you more about yeah. your original question, but go ahead, ask your question. Oh, so I have done access bars once, as you know, uh, largely because you had made a mention. And of course you, every time, I, you know, we've spoken a couple of times on the phone and I feel like every time we communicate or speak, um, you're in a different part of the world because you're off teaching these amazing modalities quite literally around the world. Anyway, I'm in Baltimore, right? So I had, I found someone here in Baltimore that does access bars. And it, you know, it was really fantastic for me. I, I think what was very curious, so I'm, I'm very familiar with energy medicine, yeah. you know, energy work and, you know, I guess Reiki especially, but, you know, I, I've tried many different types and, you know, I can usually feel the energy um, kind of move through my body, move into my body generally, sometimes, you know, out, out of my feet but uh, generally moves in my body or kind of um, undulates throughout my body. <laughs> this was a little different. So there were points in the skull that, you know, my, my uh, uh, Jennifer would touch. And instead of energy kind of flowing into my body, I actually felt like it was being pulled out. Um, and that was a very different sensation for me. Um, and then it was right after, you know, one of the things we had talked about is, um, you know, this plat platform called Karma Hub. Yeah. And it was about an hour or so after that session when this new name, uh, the Global Healing Hub, which I feel will serve Karma Hub very well, stepping into this new name, um, crossed my path, but it was just a uh, kind of a, a presentation of that name. And, and one that I sat on for a while, I really had to, you know, I had no intention of changing the name. Anyway, my point being, it was a different sensation. Um, it was very effective. I mean, I, I really felt some things shift in addition to that. And, and I thought of this amazing name, or rather this amazing name, uh, the Global Healing Hub uh, was presented to me, and that I'm very excited about. And uh, so anyway, thank you for talking to me ab about Access Bars. As I had uh, made mention right before, you know, the little video started, I, I tend to pay attention when things cross my paths in groups of three. And <laughs> within, yeah. 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 so within about a week and a half period, um, access bars actually crossed my path, that name crossed my path uh, four times. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll do it. And of course, when I did it, uh, some real change happened. Um, but it's, it's just all very interesting when you stop and pay attention. It's interesting because um, access bars is part of the body of work of access consciousness. And access okay. consciousness has been around over 30 years. The first tool is the bars. It's the one that Gary Douglas, who's the founder, hmm. channeled the information when things weren't going well in his life, like he actually was asking the universe, hey, my life is not going the way I like, you know, help me. 
contribute to me? You know, how can I make my life greater, but also be able to touch more people's lives? And he got this massage therapist who said, hey, come to New York. I want you to channel me during this massage. And that's where all of this got created. And the interesting Hmm. part is that it's the first but yet it's something that we utilize every single day. Like your experience was that, like you said, most, most things are about what can I put inside of you? We don't need anything to be put inside of us. Our bodies are magic and miracles. What they require is space and maybe an energy that contributes to them being able to do what they need to do, you know? Um, And the bars is that bars is not about the practitioner or the facilitator telling you and your body what to do. It's that, hi, I'm here. I have no point of view of what you have to receive, but let's let the miracles happen. And whatever you're ready to let go of, you will, whatever you're ready to receive, you will. But it's this crazy thing. Like every person the tip of their finger, like, you know, that tip of their finger, mine and yours are going to be different, right? Okay. There are 32 points on your head that are little indents that are the size of this. So every single one of us was actually born with these little spaces waiting for a finger to go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, so one thing I really enjoy about getting my bars run as much as possible. That's why I'm in Mexico. That's why I've stayed in Mexico is that um, where I'm staying, I have a friend who lives here and every day we've been running each other's bars and it's been so amazing because most of the time people choose things because there's a problem. You know, they say, oh, I have stress or they say, I'm not feeling good or you know, the monkey head, you know, like the monkey mind is just going crazy or whatever. Yes, you can use it for all those reasons. Um, But you could use it because you're happy and you just want to have more space and you want to gift and receive different energies. You could do it because of like you, you were curious, right? And you went and you tried it. But what it does is that these points, they let go of the points of views you have about it. Like one of them is healing, okay? It's right here. And the, what's interesting is like, my mom would always say, if I had a headache, she'd say, put your fingers on your temple, you know, just put it there, you know? Okay. And it is, that's actually the point of healing. And when someone gently touches it with these bar sessions, it's not telling you how to heal. It's just telling you all the ways that you defined because your mom told you, this is how your body heals. Doctors told you, media told you, teachers told you, you let it go. You let go of those points of views and you give permission to your body to actually heal the way you and your body can. So it's not about telling you, it's about empowering you to what you know, what your body knows. And then that's how you heard or you communicated with this energy that wanted to be your global healing platform, you know? But before that, maybe you heard it 20 times, but it didn't register because your point of view was, you know, the other name, uh, right. Karma, Karma, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So when we let go all these things, like one of them is healing, one is joy, sadness, one is money, control, creativity. Like when we are really willing to let all this go, we invite ourselves to choose what would we like now? So you're in constant control of what it is, is your destination. You get to create it. You've actually taught this in in schools and uh, military DOD and, and the VA. I, I think that's really cool. So how do you go about doing energy work for the military and the VA? How, I mean, how does that, how does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take it a step back, okay? You, you go to the I general said, with some crystals and you're like, I hey, <laughs> I, have, I have something for <laughs> yeah. you guys. Here's <laughs> No, but we go back to the beginning. 
I said, I want to tell the whole world about it. And before I discovered access consciousness, I have my own um, management consulting company. And prior to that, I was an executive in the not-for-profit world. So I worked for an organization called Easter Seals. And with Easter Seals, I was like, we need to work with the military. So I started going after some contracts and creating some partnerships with the military. And um, when I came to Access, I was like, wow, I've worked with so many veterans and so many active military in different capacities, you know, with my leadership programs and dealing with, you know, trauma and different things that are going on in their lives. And, and I was like, I, they need to know about the bars. And so I went and I had a meeting with back then who was the um, second in command to the secretary of the veterans affairs. And we had a great conversation about the bars. And um, he of course was a wounded warrior himself had been injured and became a veteran. And so, you know, we had this conversation and he was just like, this is incredible, but guess what? I can't help you. <laughs> okay. And I was like, what do you mean? He says, you know, we need, we need to have all this medical, scientific approvals, blah, 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 all these different things. And I was like, really? He's like, yes lead with your leadership program and then let's talk about this later and i was like you know when i left i was like no this doesn't work for me you know it doesn't work to have this and, and the world needs to know about it and then i started putting more of the bars into my leaders of tomorrow program and i started talking to more and more people and then i talked to a retired captain in the army and she was like, I love this. I love the bars. I love what you're putting together. Let's start creating more awareness about what this is. Mm -hmm. And at the time we were having some um, neurological testing done on the bars and the effects of it. And so I knew the white paper was on its way, but I wasn't gonna wait for the white paper. So um, we started having more and more conversations. And then guess what? Um, the military changed its hub for where um, injured military come in and where the veterans come in. So I lived in the DC area in Bethesda and the Naval Hospital became the hub where anything that happens. So if someone gets injured in Germany, they get treated in Germany and then they come to Bethesda. And so we started targeting the Naval Hospital. How can we contribute? And this captain went for her appointment and she's like, they're doing massage here. They're doing Reiki here. Why would we not be able to do bars? And mm. I said, let's go, let's do this together. And we did, we approached them. We told them about it. We have bars is in 176 countries. It has helped people in military, in schools, people in business, people who are massage. Like it has truly contributed to so many people around the world. And so, of course, they kept giving us like, you know, their standards, do this, this rule. And each time we just kept going, okay, what else is possible? Okay, how can we bring this in? Like, we never gave up. It was really that constant, like, we are not going to let the rules and regulations and someone's whatever right. stop us. And we did, we got in, and can I tell you, the whole plan was our first step there. It wasn't about teaching them. It was about going and providing the service to them. We went and they said, okay, only wounded warriors and their caregivers. And we're like, okay. So we were, as you walk into the hospital, this one main part of the hospital, we were right in the front. People walked by, they were confused. They were like, what the heck is this? They didn't want to have <laughs> anything to do with it. And then um, one veteran and his wife came over to me and they're like what is all of this and I said let me show you and they did they sat down they each got 15 or 20 minutes he said I cannot believe this I don't have pain in my body anymore I haven't experienced no pain in my body and I don't even know since when his wife fell asleep she was so relaxed and she's like I'm usually the one stressed because I have to care for him. I've never felt this relaxed before. And then 
people started coming. And then we had admirals who came and got their bars run. Nice. We had <laughs> consultants at the hospital. We had nurses. When we were supposed to finish at six o'clock, we had nurses who came, please don't close. My shift closes, <laughs> right, like finishes right now. Please, can I come get? And then we had other groups within other parts that came in. And that's where mushroom, but it really was when someone says no, and you know something greater is available, don't give up. Right. That's a really fantastic story. Um, so now you just travel, like you're, you're building a wellness center in, in Bali. And, and that's part of- Dubai. <laughs> Dubai, oh, Dubai. <laughs> Not Bali. <laughs> I was talking to someone earlier today, it was Bali. Um, Dubai, that, that's, that's even cooler, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh so the is this like a formal organization that you put together it's called global wellness for all centers how is it that you're building a wellness center in dubai is okay, that just so like a, a side hustle for you i mean what's, what is it <laughs> okay so let me explain a little bit more about me okay, okay. i have over 30 years of experience in the business arena working in technology healthcare. Um, so many fields, okay, and not-for-profit experience as well. And when I learned the bars, it was really cool. And it really got me to realize it's one of many body of work within access consciousness. So there's one that's called joy business, right? Voice for you, conscious parents, conscious kids, conscious horse, conscious, right? Like there's so many that... I was really excited about learning about all of these things. And, and I am, I'm a facilitator of many of them. Um, I still have my management consulting company, which is called Bella Pimo. And then in 2016, well, first I had another business called Joy, Love and Harmony. And then I realized it captured only a small audience of what the body of work that I was doing wanted to reach. And so in 2016, Global Wellness for All was incorporated. And from the first day, I heard the voice, Global Wellness for All, and what it desired to create was wellness centers around the world. It wanted to be in schools. It wanted to be in airports. It wanted to be everywhere. And at that moment, I was literally traveling, not every week, because I was still married at the time, but very close. And I was traveling to different countries, not just to teach the bars. I was meeting with businesses and doing consulting work. I was working, I was going to communities and empowering them with the bars, with body work, with other energetic work, with joy business tools, with right voice for you tools. Like there was a lot of different things that I was going and and sharing it. Because what I found in my consulting business is that, yes, I can have individuals that come and have, you know, coaching or sessions with me, or it's a, their business. But I want the world to know these tools are available. And communities aren't always able to access that because they're not working for that company. So right. I really made it my mission to go empower the world. And to do that, I couldn't be in one location. And I was in Portugal when COVID happened. And so for many years, my business has been saying wellness center, wellness center. And I kept saying, wait, wait, not yet. And then during COVID, I couldn't say wait anymore. More than ever, this is the time. We need to empower ourselves to know we can have more wellness. We don't have to go have 10 shots of something to become well. You don't need 10 shots. You need to have a greater communion and communication with your body. And when you start listening to your body, you start listening to your business, you start listening to your finances is when you actually start to create the change in your life that you can create. Because there is no one size fits all. Everybody's different. And the more you add you being you into this mix, it's just different. And so I did, and um, I was going to start the first center in um, Portugal, but I decided, you know, the municipality and mine, our timing was not the same. 
So I was approached by this wellness building in Dubai. And they said to me, please, will you design a spa for us? And I was like, no, I will not. The world doesn't need another spa. The world needs a mm. wellness center that includes components of a spa. And so we started to talk and he was like, yes, exactly. This is what nice. we need. Awesome. We need to revolutionize what we need to have out there. It's not that the spa is wrong, but we have to go deeper. For the people who mm -hmm. want to go deeper, we have to go deeper. For the ones who don't, yes, we're going to have massage. We'll have Reiki. We'll have the bars. We'll have body work. But we're also going to have you know, um, business workshops. We're going to have ways for you to have greater awareness about your finances, you know, becoming a leader. Like there's going to be all these other, there's pillars. And one of the pillars is the earth, creating your business with the earth, creating your life with the earth. We need to create a thriving planet. The way we're going does not work. We're, we're not doing it from scaring people. It just is, this is not working. And we have to individually become leaders to change it. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's amazing that you're doing that. Um, yeah, you, you know, you mentioned that you want to get this word out there. And, you know, in, in that sense, in, in that very loose sense, I feel the same way. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I... There are so many methods out there. Um, I'm very impressed with the access bars. You know, you, you work with a number of different methodologies and there's hundreds, there's thousands of um, methodologies out there that, you know, and a lot of this stuff can be done uh, remotely. So there's no reason that, I mean, it, you, you could do this from anywhere in the world, you know, hence the name Global Healing Hub. It's not because it's a big, fantastic global thing. It's really truly because we are now more than ever easily and totally globally accessible to everyone. So why not make these, these methods available to everyone? Now, access bars, I understand that it's largely about being, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, next to that person. Uh, there, from what I understand, there are elements that can be done remotely. And, um, but that being said, access bars, you said 170 countries throughout the world is that is 176, 176. Countries. So, yeah. you know, if you want the true access bar, the non remote version, there probably is some place fairly close to you where you can get that get that uh, modality, you know, work done on you. Yeah. Well, let me clarify a little bit. Okay. okay please, As yes. a practitioner, you cannot run someone's bars on Zoom. Okay. Okay. No, that's not there. The whole purpose of the bars is that it's assisting you and your body to receive. You know, our whole world is about let me do, do, do. Let me give, give, give. The bars, when you receive, the person is gifting they're receiving and you're gifting. It's the cycle of gifting and receiving at the same time with each other, which is mm. the coolest part, okay? But the body needs to be touched. And so what we did with COVID, which was an exception, was that we realized so many people were at home and they needed to have the tools. So what's been made available is that you could do for you, you or you could do to help people that come and you touch. So there's, there's hmm. classes you can take, there's free workshops that you can do just to learn some of the points. You could do it for yourself and create more ease in your world. I see. Now, you can also take the training online because now we have made it available, but just know you don't get credit to become a facilitator for it. But if you go in person and have a class done in person, the one day class afterwards you become a practitioner you're licensed and you can get paid to provide this service so if you're doing it just for you and the relaxation of you and your family and your home that's fine you could do it online but if you're looking to do this maybe more than just for you and your family and friends 
or you can even charge your family and friends. You know, it's like, we have kids. We just did two days ago. I was at the park. We had, I don't know, eight or nine kids that just took the spars class. Wow. We have a program just for kids. Okay. It was so beautiful. They're all different. They all function differently. You know how they learned it. We had eight till probably, I think 14 years old was the range. And it was magical to watch how they learned it. And they all did it different. Like there's points, but it's not, you can't get the points wrong. You know, even if your hand is in the wrong spot, the energy is going to work. Um, and what I found is even the teenagers want to come to the next adult class because they loved it so mm. much and they realized how much it benefited them. Um, but, you know, we had kids with autism. We had kids who are fully functional kids. We had kids all over the spectrum of autism. We had kids with ADD. Like, it was so beautiful that it doesn't matter what you've been labeled as. The youngest child that's ever taken my bars class is two years old. And the oldest was 90. Okay. Wow. So it's not like, it's not like, am I a therapist? Am I a massage person? Am I this? No, it has nothing to do with it. I was an executive when I did it, you know, uh, it just is that curiosity and desire to say, you know, let me try it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's what's so fantastic about so many of these uh, methods that, you know, even I talk about on um, the global healing hub, I, I keep on wanting to call it karma hub still it's <laughs> the global healing <laughs> hub um, is that so much of the stuff you can do yourself. I mean, you know, if it's, if it's Reiki, I mean, we, we actually have this energy in our body. We could give ourselves this version, this energetic version of Reiki without being attuned. But if you want to get attuned, it doesn't cost very much. And then you could do it on yourself. You could do it on your dog. You could do it on your children. It doesn't mean you have to be a practi practitioner. It doesn't mean you have to do anything formal with it. You can just personally benefit from it. And it really helped me out an awful lot. I mean, I, I, I'll sit and watch TV and give myself Reiki. I'll drive my car and give myself Reiki. It just puts you in, it, it evens everything out and puts you in a much better, you know, some people are really big into meditation. I struggle with it. Um, for me, I get into maybe a meditative type space when I give myself energy. Um, yeah. And I, I didn't give it to anybody else aside from my dogs and myself for probably seven years, that might be an exaggeration, maybe five years. Um, because it just wasn't my intent. I didn't plan to be a practitioner. I, I just thought all this stuff was very strange, but, but it helped me out. Yeah. So I but use see, it for me. The thing is we are energy, we are space and we are consciousness. And what all of these tools, they're tools to contribute to you having more fun, more ease, more possibilities, you know, like bars is one of, I don't even know how many, honestly, it's hundred other things that we do with access. So mm, it's, okay. it's the first, but it's not something like even the founder and the co-founder, they run their bars every day. You know, it's not something you learn at the beginning, you let it go. It just keeps getting better and better. Every session's different, but access is about empowering you to know what you know. And there's questions, you know, like one question we just ask is how does it get even better than this? When things are going well, ask it, allow it to get greater. When things are not going well, ask it, let it get greater, you know, and what else is possible you've never considered before. It's about the space of being a question, because when you are a question, you open the doors to the whole universe being able to contribute. But when you do it from answer, you block it, like literally you physically put a box around what it is and you only give yourself permission to receive awareness for what's inside your box. And so, you know, we have energetic things. I do sessions with my clients around the world. I don't do bars um, online, but there's all these other things. There's symphony of possibilities. There's, 
you know, I, I'm a maestro, I have some maestro. And like, there's so many different things. Um, my friend yesterday asking me questions, we're also gifting each other energies. It's not just asking a question. So, you know, if we really look, most of us have been looking at what's available to us from a very small space. This is me, this is my body, this is my house, this is where I live, this is how I function, this is my job. This is my lover, my husband, wife, whatever, my family. No, we're infinite beings and we have access to an infinite universe. And the minute we expand out, it's not about excluding your body. Your body is your best friend and it's here to contribute to you and it's part of your embodiment. But when we start to actually utilize the energies, just space, you know, when you add space, you're no longer going to be upset because the upset is when you're shrinking in your body. You're not the size of your body. When you expand or you watch something that makes you laugh, it massages your organs. You have more space. You have more possibility. You're going to have more awarenesses, you know? So we have to also give ourselves permission that everything, including Reiki, including tools of access consciousness, including laughing, including your animals, these are all part of the oneness of you. Wow. And when we allow us to receive, like you do, you hug your dog, you melt, you let it all go. What's the same thing? Get your bars run. It's like, Hugging a dog, you know, it's not, but it is, you know, like I'm <laughs> I just putting you. it yeah. metaphorically, yeah. right? But the, the, the energetically, thing. you're open. You expand your receiving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. You expand your awareness. You expand your consciousness. And that's us. When we are being joyful, by the way, joyful, I used to think was just when I'm laughing and I'm happy. No. When there's joy and there's expanded lightness of you, that's you. When there's heaviness, that is not you. Okay. When it's true for you as lightness, heaviness is when you're resonating with the energies of this reality, which is form, structure, and get you out of your miracle magic and you being you. Okay. I don't make it wrong, but we have to differentiate because people have problems. You know, I have people who call me about relationship problems. Um, you know, I have a program about, you know, conscious vagina. Um, I have programs of different things. So people call me about all sorts of problems. And then one session or two or three or whatever, they, they just realize, hey, I can create a different world for myself. I don't have to sit here and live in the story of the problem anymore. Even their health problems go away. Their, their you know, problems, you know, intimacy or whatever, like it goes away because they're willing to try something different. Now, everyone gets to choose, you know, I'm disclaiming it that I'm not the person with the answers and I'm not the healer that's going to heal you of everything, but I can empower you and your body to heal what you want to heal. So um, one of the first times I spoke to you, um, you were, you had mentioned something about a was it Access Bars Day? It was a large yeah. group of people. Yeah. The fact that that many people were getting together was amazing. And then you started speaking about consciousness, like that this has a sort of consciousness. And if one in the group of people, I don't remember how many you said there were uh, hundreds I, or thousands or, you know, yeah. but if can, one person makes you... that change, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if one person makes a change, then it actually somehow affects the people surrounding in that whole group it's like a collective consciousness so one beneficial beneficial change in turn affects everybody within that community of you know so it's funny because most of us would say if i do something maybe it affects my family right or if i do something at work it affects my coworkers, my boss the business right my clients Okay. Um, but we live in a world of oneness. It doesn't mean you and I are one. We're not. We are collectively part of oneness. It's like we are each a drop, but we're also the ocean. 
<laughs> so each drop of the ocean and the ocean. And this, I had no idea until my first bars session. But what we have found is that there is this, um, it's not just when you get your bars run, but once a year, yes, we have what's called Global Bars Day. And it's in January and it happens in different, it's like being recorded in one part of the world. Like it, this year it was in Houston, um, but then it's people all around the world who are inviting people into their home, into their office space or whatever else, hmm. or into a venue and we're all gifting and receiving bars. And this year I actually was in Moscow and we had about a hundred people in the room and we had a big TV uh, screen. So we were airing what was happening. And so there's conversations going on with the founder, the co-founder and other people in access, facilitators who are coming during these hours and we're sharing information with each other while everyone around the world is actually running bars. And what we found is that when you let go one point of view, like for example, one point of view I had, my dad would always say, you have to work hard to make money, you know? And so I grew up, I have to work hard to make money. Even though he lied because he had so much fun, he wasn't working hard. He worked 12 hours, but he enjoyed it, you know? So, but that's something I learned and it becomes a point of view. And so when I got my bars run, that point of view disappeared. And then I got to choose, I can have fun and make money. I can have ease and make money. You know, you know what I mean? I got right. to choose what that was gonna be for me. But when I let go that point of view, it wasn't just me letting it go. What happens is you let it go and 350,000, at least around the world, let it go. So. How does that happen? Well, we're energetically connected. It's not just your family. So whoever wants to. So like, for example, for example, you had knee pain, okay? And you don't have knee pain anymore. Whatever you let go of that, let go of the knee pain, anyone else in the world that had that knee pain, it can be let go too. But most of us, we don't, we freak out when something we know that's been there a long time goes away and we bring it back. Right. So someone in Japan could now have no more knee pain and they consider it a miracle. And someone in Russia might say, oh, what happened to my knee pain? I have to bring it back. How do I bring it back? You know, like it just is like the energy and that contribution can go, but it's still someone's choice, you know? But they don't know you let go. They don't know you, Lauren. So they don't know who you are. They don't know what happened around the world, but it's the butterfly effect. If you do this at the same time and as many other um, people, so you could collectively get healed or you can um, squelch a lot of triggers or a lot of good yeah. things can happen to you if you do it at the same time as a bunch of other people. Well, you could is, do is it that, by yourself. Okay. You could do it by yourself. But, and so, have I, you know, I, so if, if I do it by yeah. myself, I, I'll think of one thing and maybe I'll think of another thing and maybe, you know, so maybe I'll come up with a handful. But if I'm doing it with five people and each of them think of five things, then I'm potentially being... Um, helped along with it's the it's, multiplier effect right you know it is when you that's why okay so one of the things in the bars manual is people always asked um actually not in the bars manual but in the body manuals um the so bars is one and then there's this whole other body of work of body processes and you know you take the imprints off your body um with these different processes and there's probably there's 60 in one manual, but there's probably hundreds, maybe a thousand body processes. And so people always ask, can I do it to myself? Okay. And yes, if you learn a body process, you can do it to yourself. And I do all the time. Like, you know, um, I will touch my body and I will run certain energies. This works. 
but when you do for you, it's like one plus one equals two. But right. if there was a hundred of us in that room running that body process or other body processes together, it's the multiplier of one times a hundred or one right. time, you know, if there's a hundred people. So when someone else does for you, and when you do with others, the multiplier effect comes in. So if you and I are doing okay. it, it's one times a hundred, right. add more people, and then it multiplies even greater. So, uh, I mean, that sounds amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. H how does that work? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, uh, I'm, yeah. When you get and into this I, realm, there's a lot of stuff that's just so completely bizarre that, you know, I've, I've witnessed and accepted. And um, yeah. so, you know, I, I often throw out the analogy of, you know, I have these set of beliefs that are completely and totally ridiculous that I now truly believe are true. And when other people throw out these set of beliefs, which are also completely and totally ridiculous, I am now at a point now where I'm like, okay, it's possible. You know, I'm at least yeah. open to the possibility that this handful of ridiculousness of uh, that is is potentially true because I have my own handful of ridiculousness that I truly believe is true. So why not be open to other stuff that is really hard to get your head around? Um, yeah. Yeah. But what if? So one thing I found is don't trust me and don't believe me. Okay. You need to learn about you and your body. And one of the tools is what is light for you? What is expansive for you is usually what's true for you. And what is heavy is usually not. It doesn't resonate with your points of view. So for example, I love, um, I don't know, let's say avocados, okay? I okay. love avocados. If you hate avocados, it's going to be heavy for you. But if I like avocados, it's going to be light for me when I say I love avocados because it's what resonates with you. And so I always tell people, please do not trust me, trust you and your knowing. And it's about you expanding your knowing and trusting you more, trusting your body more. And when your body shrinks and you're going <laughs> like that contracted feeling, something's off, don't go with it. That usually means red flag, something is not resonating. You know, and so I hear a million things on the news, people talking, there's so many modalities around the world. There's so much, honestly, also bullshit around the world. And I've learned what is, what is my marker to know what works for me and what is true for me. And if you really go by what's light for you, it will guide you, you know, um, and, you know, with all of this, I was hesitant. I came from a business background. I came from a scientific background. My, my degree is in cellular and molecular biology. You know, it was about proving, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is nothing about proving and it's the unknown of possibilities. And so, you know, I, um, yesterday there is an energy called energetic facelift. And so that's another energy that access consciousness has. And my friend and I, we were doing a swap with it and it's magical. It has like truly 65 different energies in it. And, you know, with this energy, it was really interesting because last year we had this training globally, people in their homes, but they had to have partners that were physically there with them. And we did it with thousands of people. And I experienced the energy of like one-on-one -on -one session and then the experience of all of us. People from all around, like China, Japan, Russia, Malaysia, US, Europe, like Finland, like it was like all these different places and the energies are so different in these countries. And so what I know of even this facelift energy, there were so many other energies that got added. And so um, I've just learned, you know, what's true for me and go with that. You don't have to make something real for you that it's not resonating. Well, th this has really been fantastic. Is there is there something else that you wanted to add before we uh, started to wrap things up? I wanted to just say 
there's a lot of things in the world, you know, find what's gonna work for you. Um, they're all tools for us to be empowered to what we actually know. I just happen to be really excited to the body of work with access consciousness and it's fast and I've seen a lot of changes. I mean, I've had people come to me who had stage four cancer, nothing worked. They started cutting their organs to take the cancer out. And after a couple of sessions and teaching them and their daughter bars, you know, she's 10 years in remission, but it's oh. not remission. It's actually, she's made it disappear, you know? Um, I had someone who fell down and broke um, a disc in their spine, two sessions, and they weren't. It's not about me. It's the space I can be. It's the energies I can provide. But it's, what are you desiring? What is your body desiring? It's empowering you and your body to heal you. So, you know, I don't know. I just get so excited. And that's why I travel, you know, for the last 12 months, um, twice, I've stayed somewhere more than two weeks. Um, I'm just off to a new country because so many people want to know how else can they empower themselves? And they are curious. So I really wonder what's possible now because COVID created a lot of havoc, but it also created people stepping up and actually wanting to explore what's true for them. Thank you so much. Thank you this so much. This has been amazing. And to connect to Lale and other practitioners, go to theglobalhealinghub.com.